Hi, this is uh, Jay Horowitz with the latest editions of Amazing, Amazing Conversations with my good friend, Glendon Rush, or as I call him, Jerky, and he calls me Jerky. Glendon, you're known to the Mets world as one of the stars of the 2000 team, won 11 games, over 30 starts, have a new career now. You, Ryan Dempster, Reed Ryan are, are the executive producers of a new film coming out sometime next year. Uh, 20K about the four pitchers we struck out, 20 more batters a game. Uh, our own Max Scherzer, Kerry Wood, Roger Clemens, and Randy Johnson. Randy Johnson. How did you first get into that? I mean, how did you first get into that kind of stuff? This was a uh, this was a, a 2 a.m. idea I had a couple years ago, um, kind of thinking about... You don't sleep either, huh? Yeah, c- kind of thinking about um, the special feats in baseball and... Uh, being a a good friend with Kerry Wood and playing with him in Chicago. And obviously his game is one of the most famous games ever pitched. And uh, thinking about doing something that, that put all four of these guys together, because it's it's one of the rarest feats ever accomplished in baseball, especially on the pitching side of it. So uh, we've been working on it for over a year plus now we've, we've completed about 40 interviews. Uh, Randy, Roger, Max, and Kerry included. Um, it's going to be awesome. We're, we're finishing, uh, we have more production to do and then, and then we'll get into the, uh, you know, the post-production and editing and everything else that goes along with it. How, how do you make contacts with you? Use you use like Ryan's connections, read Ryan's connections here. How do you get into, yeah, I'm sure they've been bombarded not, not, with a lot of requests. How do you get to them to say this? Hey, this is a pretty cool thing to do. Yeah, the first the first thing I did was call Kerry Wood and ask if he would be interested. He absolutely said yes. Then I then I spoke with um, Ryan Dempster, and and what happened was is I reached out to Reed Ryan because uh, we wanted to interview Nolan just because you know he's uh, Mr. K himself, and and he'd struck out nineteen a couple times. And so when I spoke with Reed, they were in the middle of doing the Facing Nolan documentary. So. Long story short, Reed connected me with uh, Russell Groves, uh, the producer of Facing Nolan, and we started down a road of figuring out how we could work together as partners and and get this this film underway. So uh, it's been a long process. We got a ways to go, but I'm really excited about it. First time I've ever done anything in this uh, area at all, and and it's exciting. You know, our own David Cohn struck out 19 batters two in a game against the Phillies. Yeah, I, mean, I can't say it on family TV here. Do you know the side story with that? I don't know the whole story behind it, but Coney is actually on our list of guys that we want to interview. We haven't got to him yet. We've gone back and forth multiple times. I've been trying to uh, get a time where he's in the right place at the right time. But, yeah, we'd love to interview him for this film. This was a farmer's this was the last game of the season, a no-name game, and he struck out 19 Phillies in Philadelphia. Yeah, it was the last. But you, you should ask him again. I don't want to repeat the story on this TV. It's a family show. So, but just ask him about how, how that happened. So tell me about the personalities. You know, Randy Johnson has the perception of being this crunchy old guy, but he's changed, right, through the year? I mean, he's changed now. Rand, Randy and I connected through um, kind of the love of, of music, and, and he's a photographer, and he reached out to me um, about three or four years ago, and, and he was looking to hopefully shoot some photography with Rage Against the Machine, and... Uh, I, I'm longtime buddies with Tom Morello, their guitar player. And so I connected Tom and Randy and then Randy and I had, had have kind of developed a friendship over the years. And he, he is an absolute awesome guy. He really is. I mean, he's different than you would think uh, from what we saw when he was on the mound. And uh, he's really a nice guy. And I, I've really enjoyed getting to know him. How about Clemens? Uh... Roger's awesome too. I, I I didn't know him at all either, uh, other than from across the field. You know, none of these guys I played with, uh, with the exception of Kerry, and and I've known him forever. But Roger was great. Gave us a bunch of his time, and and uh, we actually hope to get some more time with him uh, sometime this year. How do you go about deciding where to place the film? What you get it done? Well, I think the the best route um, is probably to kind of follow in the footsteps of. Uh, what Russell and the guys did with, with facing Nolan is it uh, came out first. Uh, they did some, uh, some events around it, showed it at a couple of the stadiums. Um, we'd like to do something like that. So fans can see it. And then uh, they showed it at South by Southwest, the festival, and then it was on, on demand. 
uh, and then eventually landed on Netflix. So I think that could be a route that we go. We, we don't know that yet. We'll, we'll know uh, when we get the film finished. The two SAS team is, is famous now for having people have alternate different careers. Remember Todd Zeal produced a movie called Dirty Deeds? Yes. And he worked, he did some work with Charlie Sheen. Uh, and Mike, he didn't produce, Mike was on the TV show on Fox when he was jumping out of planes and stuff like that. I yeah, no, I saw Mike. I watched uh, all of the um, show, that the special ops show that Mike was on. He was he was incredible. I, I don't know how he, I, I watched what those guys went through. I don't know how he made it through the first day or two of that. I, I don't think I could have. And, you know, I mean, he's, he's in his early 50s now and still in what we consider a good shape, you know, in our head. But as we get older, it's not as easy. And, to- and Al, Al made a great career himself with the Yes Network in uh, – with uh, you know MLB Network, would you would you you know I didn't really look at some research. Guy, you played for twelve years. I didn't realize that to a few twelve years over a thousand strikeouts. Uh, you know 67, 68 wins. When you quit playing, did you think you would ever be doing this? You know, uh, I'd be calling you Steven Spielberg now and Francis yeah, Ford Coppola. Yeah, let's hope so. Yeah, I, I um I, ever since I've been done, I've I've always wanted to do something in in um, whether it be TV or radio and and. I enjoy doing little guest spots if somebody brings me on to do something. So hopefully now my boys are getting a little bit older. Hopefully now I can get a get a little more time. And I'd, I'd love to do something at some point uh, in the media world, especially around baseball. I love being around the game. I love talking baseball. You know, you know you, I know you have a great sense of history. Uh, I remember the last time we spoke, you bit to what? How many games in the Field of Dream games? Two, one or two games you've been near? Oh yeah, I've been there a couple times. I went back this year when the Cubs played the Reds, and then I was there uh, for the 25th anniversary of the film. They had we did kind of a charity softball game there, and Kevin Costner played, and I was lucky enough to be a part of that. And you're going to represent the Mets Memorial Day in in Cooperstown, and they have each of the representatives of the Mets at the Hall of Fame game, and. You're going to, you know, maybe throw, I, I told him you could throw four innings. Was that a lie? I got four in me for sure, Jay. I, yeah. You know, uh, I'm, I'm honored that, that uh, you thought of me and, and you were kind of the uh, driving force behind uh, getting me to do this. I, I know they wanted me to do it last year and I wasn't able to with yeah. schedule stuff, but I'm excited to go this year. I haven't, the last time I was in Cooperstown, I went with, um, with my wife Kelly and my oldest son Cade when Greg Maddox was inducted, so I was there for that. But that was the that's the one and only time I've been there, so I'm really looking forward to this. And they give you a, what's cool about Glenn, they give you a private tour, and you have the opportunity to play golf. It's a great golf course. I was up there last year when Gil Hodges inducted. It's great. It's a great community. It's like it's like Pleasantville, you know. You know they have ice cream stores on Main Street, and it's it have parades up there. It's, I, I know you you'll have a great time. Because looking back on on 2000. You know, did you think, I mean, you know, it was a, I think we went over 90 games, really went through the playoffs. You got a um, a win in one of the playoff games in St. Louis, right, in relief, yep. if I remember correctly. You pitched in the World Series. Kind of a, a forgotten team. Not forgotten is that the right word. We lost to the Yankees, a heavily favored Yankee team, five games. I think they outscored us by five runs, four or five runs. It's kind of, you know, if you don't, I kind of wish maybe – we played somebody else. I don't know. I just felt that team never got to, to do what it deserved. What's your feeling looking back? Well, I, I mean, such fond memories and incredible experiences we had with that team. And that was a, a huge part of me growing as, as a as a pitcher and as a person, uh, being around all those veteran guys that we had with Leiter and Hampton and Rick Reed, Johnny Franco, all those guys, Dennis Cook. Turk, those guys took great care of me, kind of showed me the ropes and how to how to be a pro. And even though, you know, it was my third year in the big leagues, that team. And that series was incredible. I, I think the, the hardest part is that we did lose those games and it was so close that the, the Yankees bullpen was so good that year that once they got the lead, we, you know, we were never able really to get it back. So it's unfortunate. They were in the, in the midst of winning three in a row. They almost won four in a row. And, and, uh, but yeah, from a Mets standpoint, you know, being back last year at at, um, at the Old Timers Day, and we had so many of our guys there from that 2000 team, I, I feel so welcomed, and and the Mets fans are always treat us with such great respect, and they're excited to see us because that generation is 
you know, they think about those teams, the 99 team, the 2000 team, and, and uh, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. You, to be a you had over 60 starts in 2000, 2001. So the Turk teacher, did he introduce you to sushi, uh, Jake Glenn? Yeah, I do not like sushi at all. He was trying to get me to eat sushi last weekend when we were there with you. I, I'm not a sushi guy, but... Uh, Rick and all Rick and, uh, and Rick Reed and Turk did. They introduced me. I kind of like it maybe once a month, maybe. Yeah. But all the guys used to eat is so it used to be at a hotel in Pittsburgh. That I think the Vista had a great sushi bar, you know, below. So last week I saw you. You were in, uh, in town for Amazing Day. Talk about the different, you know, you. I know you captured the excitement of the fans. 2000, the fans were excited. And like, you know, we, we're, we're on our way to the World Series. Any correlation between... This year, which you picked up an amazing day in, in 2000, the excitement of the fans. Yeah, there's there. I think just the whole aura that surrounds the team now, with with the uh, you know team being bought by by Steve Cohen and him and his wife Alex do such an incredible job of the events that they're putting on, the way they include the fans, the way they you know get excitement going throughout the city is, is just awesome. And, and all the times I've been back now, um, you know, for old timers day, I was back when we kind of did the, uh, the remembrance of the 2001 team. And right. it's, it's so cool to see the, the, the Mets fans. And, and now we're seeing the next generation of them too, right? And probably two generations of kids that are growing up Mets fans as well. Tell me about your experience as the old timers at game. I mean, we get a lot of calls now. They want us to do it again. We had 68 guys coming back. Like you said, a lot of the guys from the 2000 team might have to wait a little bit, but like we have to, you know, warn off stuff like Amazing Day. We want to, you know, the Cones really want to keep the alumni stuff going so we'll get people back. But I mean, do, do you you got a good feeling when you came back this last time? I knew were, you were handing out uh, jerseys and hats on the streets down the Union Square. Yeah, I did. It was great. The, it was just fun to uh, interact with the fans and, and, you know, the ones that are, in, in my age group came, you know, came up and talked to me like, man, I watched you when I was, you know, 12 years old or 14 years old or whatever. So now I'm, you know, 48 pushing 50. So we're getting up there and, and it's cool to see how that spread uh, down to the next group of fans. And the, the one thing that I, I think is really cool with what the new ownership has done, what Steve Cohen's done is included the alumni back in and every single generation um you know for me growing up i watched the 86 team you know with with doc and daryl and and hojo and that whole crew and you know being with tim tuffle and mookie this past weekend was i mean for me that's as exciting as i'm i'm like a fan i really am and and i'll never forget sitting at on the bench at old timers day and i was had Daryl Strawberry on one side of me and Doc Gooden on the other side of me. For that, that was as exciting a moment as I've ever had on a baseball field, uh, along with playing. So pretty, pretty special. Well, after you could play, you coached a little bit with the Padres in the minor leagues, right? And now you, you really have two young boys, uh, Trevor and Cade. When, when, uh, Cade is in college, right? Yeah, Cade's at uh, Indiana University Southeast, and he's on the mound pitching now. So I've, I've spent a bunch of time. Uh, I live in Louisville, and they're about. 30 minutes across the bridge on the Indiana side. So I go over there and spend a bunch of time with their pitchers and, and their team and hang out in the dugout with them. It's been a blast. My youngest Trevor is a freshman uh, in high school and he's pitching too. So it's, it's good times. And I'm just being a dad and a husband and a, a partner. And they let these are righties. Good Glenn. What's that? They let these are righties. Oh, they're both righties. Yeah. They both were screwed right. up and throw with the wrong hands. So I couldn't, I couldn't get them. Do, do, do the guys, you know, you stop playing with own, what was your last year? Oh, nine was uh, my last oh, year with Colorado. Did, did the guys know you, you played? I mean, when they, you know, the guys at a high school, college team, did they sync up? Did they know who you were? Or did you have to tell them? Or your kids tell them who you were? Or do you think they mostly know? Uh, I think it's kind of a little bit of both. You know, they're young. So a lot of, a, a lot of the guys were, um, you know, the college age kids were probably seven, eight, nine years old when I was still playing. So they, they don't really remember you, but, the, but they go and, you know, immediately pull up footage or pull up YouTube stuff and figure you out. And they, they just want to talk baseball. And I love it. I, I, uh, I really genuinely enjoy talking to the coaches, all the players, uh, just about experiences. And, you know, the, the biggest thing I try and help the kids with is, is keeping their heads on straight because baseball is such a hard game and a game of failure to, 
you know, to stay positive and they're going to go through rough times. And so I try and help them. With that. Talking about coaching your kids. Dave, David Wright's got three young kids. So he was coaching one of his daughter's uh, uh, T-ball team. And a lady was the opposing coach. And the woman goes up to David. He says, so tell me, you were involved with baseball and all. And so David said to her, yeah, I dabbled a little bit. <laughs> he never said it was on seven all-star teams because they were, but that was David. So, I mean, do you find you got to – do your kids tell the other kids who you were? And, or, or? Yeah, the kids do that. The kids do most of the bragging for you uh, if they can. My, my boys are actually – they're pretty quiet, and they're very much on the humble side. So half the time, I don't even know if they tell uh, other kids what I did until, you know, people eventually ask you. And, um, yeah, I, I try and stay quiet on that side because then sometimes you get trapped into some conversations that you don't want to have. What's the biggest things you tell your sons? about baseball i know you went with summer you had one year we had to sit out where you had a clot in your arm in your arm right yeah yeah i missed uh in in 2006 i had a, a pulmonary embolism so yeah i had a clot in my lung i missed i missed gosh almost 18 months and then came back and, right. and pitched for a couple more years but Tony had that too, right? Or some similar. Yeah, it's common. So. Sometimes guys get impingements or something, and it'll shoot a clot up there. I didn't have anything. It was a family history thing, and I just randomly happened to me, and I was lucky that uh, I was able to come back from it. But mo most of the stuff I tell my boys is to really enjoy it. Um, it's hard when you're when there's pressure and you're going through it as a kid, and you've never had these experiences of failure and and everything that they go through. And now there's even more pressure with social media and everyone else, what, you know, watching what they're doing and, and all that goes along with it. I think I really just encourage them to enjoy what they're doing, regardless of how far they play, how much they play, just enjoy it. And, and those are memories they'll look back on and they'll make some really good friends. And that's what baseball is all about. You have kind of a divided house, right? Some of your guys root for the Padres and, and, and the company. The Cubs, Mets, Padres, and you're yeah, it's all divided up. I got my oldest, Cade, is uh, he's a he's a Mets, Marlins, Padres guy. Uh, Trevor's a Cubs, Mets. Uh, he kind of fitters in between those two, but I would say he's more Cubs than anything. But yeah, pretty funny. They but they both kind of follow the Padres and a lot of the guys that I coached, which are now all over the place. Um, yeah. So so that works out well. They, they like everybody. But it's a, it's a fun house. I'm excited. It's opening day, and, and um, I, I love it. We got baseball starting at 1 Eastern, and it'll be going all, all into the yeah. night. But how, how intense did you find Max Scherzer? Again, I don't work with the current guys who work with alumni guys, but what I hear, he's very – very intense about everything he does. He is. Uh, I, I I heard a little bit about it because I'm I'm you know really good friends with Mark Pryor and Mark had Max you know at the end of the uh, at that year in in L A and was telling me about his bullpen sessions and everything that he that he does and I got to meet Max for the first time in person at Old Timers Day last year and we were we were filming with him shortly after that and he was awesome so nice to talk to it was great with my son Trevor and. It, I, I definitely think he can turn it on and off. I mean, that's that's what his job is. Is when it when it's right. it's time to do his work, he's focused in, locked in, and. Glad, glad, so the fans looking for the film, you know, nothing's locked in date, but hopefully sometime in the spring of 2024, with that we you know, sometime around. Maybe. Yeah, that's a realistic target date. I think we're we're probably sometime uh, in the baseball season of of 2024. We got we got quite a bit of work to do. We've got quite a bit done but it's a it's a long process probably longer than i thought it would be but i'm excited it's gonna be a good one so how about this this is this is 20 2023 right so 2028 the academy awards you have glennon rush reed ryan and ryan dumpster up on stage to accept the uh, an academy award for for 20k right yes they yeah that would be awesome i'd love that um yeah i'm yeah. I'm just excited for everybody to see it. If, if you, everyone I talk to that as we've been working on this, um, that remembers those games, uh, you know, Roger doing it twice, Carey's game, Scherzer's game, and then Randy's, Randy's game was kind of the craziest one out of the bunch because it ended up in extra innings. Um, but the one crazy stat about all of those 20 strikeout games is – there was no walks. It was a hundred strikeout, really? total, no walks. That is crazy. Between those four pitchers. That, 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 that is crazy. Well, Glenn, I want to wish you the best of luck. You're a good friend, and I know we'll have you up here soon. And, uh, you know, uh, 
stay healthy and uh, good luck with your projects, Jay. Thanks, Jay. Thanks for having me.